The patient is a 22-year-old female experiencing cognitive, physical, and emotional deficits related to a motor vehicle collision that occurred two months ago. The patient was the driver of a vehicle traveling approximately 50 miles per hour. Another driver ran a stop sign and collided with the driver's side of the patient's vehicle. The force of the impact caused the patient's head to make contact with the steering wheel and driver's side window. The clinician will begin by assessing cranial nerve 1, the olfactory nerve. Following, an ophthalmoscopic exam will be conducted to assess cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve. It is important to assess visual field and visual acuity in this section. First, I'm going to have you close your right nostril like this. I'm going to have you close your eyes. I'm going to ask you what you smell. Okay. You ready? You smell anything? Now close the other nostril and close your eyes. You smell anything now? Mmm, smells like coffee. Great job. All right. Great. Now I'm going to use this flashlight to examine your eyes. Awesome. Okay, now cover one eye with your hand and please look straight ahead at the wall and read the first line of letters. Great, now let's switch eyes and cover your other one. Please read the second line. A, B, C, D. Great, good job. I have you cover one eye and I'm gonna cover my eye as well. So we can do this eye. And then I'm gonna put my finger in front of you and I want you to tell me when you see it. Do you see it? Okay, now this time I'm gonna cover my right eye and I'm gonna ask you to do the same for your right eye and then I'm gonna ask you if you can see my finger. Okay. Okay, so tell me when you see my finger. Now. Perfect. Now. All right. Now. Now, perfect. Now I'm gonna have you remove the cover from your eye and I'm going to, um, show some numbers on my hands and I want you to tell me what the numbers are. So, four, six, eight. Good job. The patient was only able to identify the smell of the coffee on the right side, so the clinician can infer that there is damage to the left side. There were no abnormal findings when observing the redness, visual field, and visual extinction. So she can infer that there is no damage to cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve. The clinician will now begin to assess extraocular movements, convergence movements, and smooth pursuit. The cranial nerves examined in this section include the ocular motor nerve, the trochlear nerve, and the abducens nerve. The patient will be directed to move the head in various directions while keeping the head still. The clinician will also perform an optokinetic nystagmus test to see if the client has spontaneous nystagmus or disconjugate gaze. Finally, pupillary responses will be assessed. Now I would like for you to follow my finger with your eyes only, but remember to keep your body still. Are you holding up two fingers? I don't know which one to follow. No, that's okay. We'll try another another task. Yep. Okay, great. Now look at this pen and then switch over to this spoon. And I want you to go back and forth until I say stop. Okay. Go. I deleted them already, so. Okay. Um, okay, now I'm going to place this object really close to my nose and I'm going to move it closer and closer to you. And I want you to tell me when you start to see two of these objects. So tell me when you see two. I see two. Now, I'm going to move this piece of paper with stripes on it past you and I want you to just look at it for me, okay? Okay. Great. Okay, now I want you to look at my finger and now try to focus on your nose. Okay, good job. Are you ready? walk to the other side of the room and then walk back. Good. 
After observing difficulties with extraocular movements, the clinician can now infer that there has been damage to the superior oblique muscle, which is innervated by cranial nerve 4. When sitting straight, the patient held her head tilted to the left side a bit as her eyes were trying to compensate it. And after observing eye position changes while doing a cover-uncover test, the clinician can also infer that there has been damage to cranial nerve 4. This was likely due to hitting the head on the steering wheel during the accident. She is experiencing so superior oblique palsy, which causes her to have difficulty aligning her eyes correctly. Due to eye muscles affected, the patient has a problem with 3D vision. After assessing pupillary responses, the clinician is able to infer that pupil illumination and contralateral illumination were not damaged. When accommodation was tested, the pupil was not able to constrict when an object moved towards the eye. Accommodation is associated with cranial nerves 2 and 3. After observing the patient veer to the left side when asked to walk across the room, the clinician now knows that the patient's spatial perception has been affected. Next, the clinician will assess spatial sensation and muscles of mastication. Yes. All right, so I'm going to have you close your eyes, and I'm going to touch parts of your face with this cotton swab, and then I want you to tell me what areas I'm touching, okay? Okay, so go ahead and close your eyes. Now please open your eyes and look up. All right. Now I want you to clench your jaw really, really tight. All right, and I'm gonna check your jaw reflex. Great. The facial nerves appear to be intact. The patient reported achiness in the eye area and this is a side effect of misalignment. All right, so now we're gonna test your facial expressions. Can you smile for me? All right, now can you puff up your cheeks full of air? Wonderful. Now I want you to clench your eyes really, really, really tight. Okay. Now like wrinkle your eyebrows if you're mad. Go well, again. All right, so I'm gonna put a flavor on this cotton swab and I'm gonna have you close your eyes and I want you to tell me what uh, flavor it is, okay? okay? So go ahead and close your eyes. Stick out your tongue. What is that? Salt? Good job. Now the clinician will address cranial nerve 8, the vestibular cochlear nerve. By asking the patient to lie down on the table, the clinician will test for hearing and vestibular sense. Let's go. I want you to close your eyes and I'm going to make some sounds next to your ears and I just want you to tell me if you can hear them. Yep. 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 Awesome. <laughs> After observation, the clinician can infer that the patient has no problems with the facial nerve. After assessing the vestibular cochlear nerve, the clinician can infer that hearing has not been damaged, but the client has peripheral lesion of the left inner ear that is causing benign proximal positional vertigo. The clinician determined nystagmus in the left side after observing the patient's eyes moving rapidly from left to right horizontally, and the patient reported dizziness. The patient did not demonstrate nystagmus on the right side. Now the clinician will continue the exam addressing cranial nerve 9, the glossopharyngeal nerve, and cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve. Ready? Okay, go. All right, I'm going to press your tongue with this tongue depressor, and I want you to say ah uh, for me, okay? So open up. Uh, okay, awesome. Have you noticed any voice um, differences since your accident? No. Nope. The patient's gag reflex and palate elevation and muscles of articulation appear to be intact. The client will end the assessment by assessing cranial nerve 11. 
the accessory nerve, and cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. Okay, now I want you to shrug your shoulders for me like that. Ow, it kind of hurts. Okay, can you look left and right for me? Okay, good. Okay, next I'm going to kind of test what your tongue is doing right now. So right now I just want you to rest your tongue on the bottom of the floor of your mouth like this. Okay, good. Now I want you to stick it out and move it side to side. Great. Now I want you to take your tongue and kind of push it against your cheek like that. Great job. The clinician now knows that the sternocleidal, mastoid, and trapezius muscles have not been affected, but the client is experiencing pain and tenderness, possibly resulting from whiplash during the accident or constant head tilting and eye muscle strain. The patient was able to complete all tongue movements, therefore the hypoglossal nerve is not impaired.